Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. We're so glad that you joined us today. Mm -hmm. Got a question for you. Have you ever achieved a goal or found success but felt that something was still lacking? Maybe you've been wounded and then thought this question, is there more to life than this? Mm -hmm. If you've been hurt and are feeling broken, the answer is yes, there is more to life than this. And if you've found success and are still feeling hollow inside, the answer is also yes. Just like it was for Chantel, who grew up in an abusive home. And just like Jason, who reached stardom with a chart-topping song, they both found out that with God, there is more to life than this. Yeah, their stories are both on the program today, along with a powerful devotional from Lori to help you live a full life. How does God fill your void? By pouring more of himself into you. Mm. I found that instead yeah. of just throwing it out and starting new, what he does is just pours more of himself in you. Yeah. And then as he overflows, the old you is gone, the new you is here. Yeah, and you know, it's all about relationship, right? It's all about relationship. It's not about doing a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And I think that's sometimes where you get it wrong. We think following God is about, I gotta read my Bible more. I mean, sure, read your Bible, but yeah. God doesn't love you more or less, you know? If you cram a few more extra verses in each day or pray more or serve at the church more, like yeah. he just loves you and he, he loves, loves to you. hang out with you. And I, I so resonate with what you're saying. Yeah. You know, I think when I slow down, yeah. that helps me give space enough for God yeah. to fill me. Because you're a human being, not just doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, to get things started today, this is how Chantal's life was transformed by love. <laughs> Growing up in South Louisiana, Chantel Weber's childhood was far from idyllic with a mother who was emotionally distant and verbally abusive. I always felt she hated me. She never said she loved me. She never said I was pretty. When her parents decided to let a family member live on their property, the pain only escalated once he began to abuse Chantel. From the time I was eight until I was 12, that abuse went on and he would tell me that if I ever said anything, he would abuse my baby sister. I didn't want anything to happen to her. And so I just didn't say anything. I think I naturally just blamed myself. I knew it had to be my fault, that I had to be really bad. Unable to confide in her mother, Chantel suffered quietly. The abuse finally ended, but her mother's excessive partying made her more irrational in her contempt for her daughter. So I was in eighth grade and I came home. She had my bag packed and she said, get in the car, are we going somewhere? And I said, where are we going? And she wouldn't talk. And it's a hospital, I can tell. And I'm like, why are we at a hospital? And she said, you'll see. Without any medical evaluation, her mother had arranged to have Chantel committed to a mental institution. I say, Mom, what is going on? And she says, don't worry about it. She signed a paper and walked out and never looked back. I go to the, the room and I curl up in a fetal position on the floor in the bathroom and just cry. And, and I'm just like, I felt like I was in jail. After three weeks, Chantel began to open up to her psychiatrist. I told him I was sexually abused, that my mom didn't love me, that she was always verbally mean to me, that she drank and she partied and she was more worried about other people than me. And after about a week, he told me I would need to share these things with my mom. Chantel knew a confrontation with her mother would not go well, but she agreed to talk to her. Without hesitation, she slaps me clean across the face, calls me a lying curse word, and says, this is what you brought me down here for. Walks out the room, slams the door, and leaves. Chantel was allowed a home visit the following weekend when her parents would be throwing a large St. Patrick's Day party. The man who abused her was invited. My mom picks me up, and as coldly as you could be, she said, Chantel, don't you make him feel unwelcome, and don't you dare say what you told me to anyone else, because if you do, you'll never get out of that hospital. From that moment on, Chantel decided to bury the pain deep inside her heart and mind. I learned to put on my mask and wear a mask every day. And I never said I needed help. I never cried out for help because I didn't trust that I would ever get it. 
After three months were completed, she went home. She kept her distance from her mom, went on to finish high school, get a job, and move out. In the coming year, she did her best to keep the hurt hidden, but it found its way to the surface. I got married to a guy who abused me. I left him, got pregnant for a guy who I didn't love, and went, okay. You, you had a chance and you did it all wrong. You're really bad. Around that time, someone told her about a church that had just opened their doors. My perception of God was that he was going to judge me. I did not think he would love me. I thought he would actually reject me, but I wanted to try. Pregnant and searching for answers, Chantel made an appointment with a pastor at the new church. I sat down and said, I need, I need to get some things off my chest. And I just went through my life of everything I did wrong, including being abused, everything I thought that was my fault. She says, can you stand up? And I stood up and she hugged me. And when she hugged me, I felt love. And I had never felt love before, I, I felt love. And she said, Jesus loves you just where you are. And I was like, why? I'm bad. And she says, no, it's OK. And she said, do you want to accept Jesus? And she led me in prayer. And I felt just freedom. Chantel forgave the family member who abused her. And before her mother died, she was able to mend their relationship. Today, she is happily married, loving life with her daughter and son, and has found freedom that only comes from relying on Jesus Christ. I was independent my whole life. I needed no one or nothing. And now I'm totally today, I, I don't do anything without asking God first. I'm dependent on Him. God restored relationships that should have remained broken. He taught me how to forgive people. And in that, I have freedom. I love what Chantel says, I don't do anything without God first. Yeah. He restored I, relationships with me. And you know what? It's a beautiful story and a difficult story, isn't it, yes, Brian? It really is. It just made me feel sad, and I'm sure there's those watching that can relate to some of the brokenness mm. that Chantel experienced. And this is not from God. We live in such a broken world. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things that really stuck with me is she said, I've always depended on myself and I put on a mask. And I really feel like God is saying, someone today is getting permission to take off the mask, mm. to remove the facade. I remember just recently uh, uh, a woman and a, and a number of women, Lori, who uh, shared with me, they were afraid to sit down with me at first because they've always trusted in themselves and they could not trust a man. Right. And they said, um, you know, I, I, I just have never been able to trust. And I said, so how does the word Father God and Father mm -hmm. Heart of God mm -hmm. strike you? She said, I, I've never been able to identify mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. And that's when I told her, I said, you were never built to carry that battle. That's right, Brian. And, you know, I love this response of the pastor in the story. He just yeah. reached out and hugged her. And yes. I, if you can receive this through the screen, I'm just yeah. hugging you right yeah. now. Yeah. And Jesus, he just, he, he tangibly holds us in these difficult times. And it's through his love. Just listen to Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It says, the faithful love of the Lord, it never ends. Amen. Through the ups and through the downs. His mercies never cease. They never stop. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. You know how you can know that God loves you, that God will never remove his love from you? is because watch the sun come up faithfully every morning, you know, down faithfully every night. That's the work of God. Would you call us today, 1-855-759-0700. We have this resource for you. We want to love you through the phone. Yes. There's loving voices there. Give us a call today. Let that relationship be restored. And now, for anyone struggling to get through the day, this message is for you. Hello, my name's Irene Rollins, and I am a wife. I'm a daughter of God. I am a mother, I am a pastor, and I am a leader. And I'm also a recovering alcoholic. 
Several years ago, I had the opportunity to summit Mount Kilimanjaro, which is at 19,341 feet, the highest point of Africa. The water in my camelback froze. That's how cold it was, below freezing. It was 50% less oxygen. You could barely breathe. If you went any faster, you'd get sick. And what was amazing was we were all assigned a one-on-one -on -one guide, and my guide, all he did was encourage me all the way up that mountain. Irene, take one step at a time. And he would say in Swahili, pole pole, that means slowly, slowly. It was like he was singing me a song to comfort me as I was miserable t making this climb up this mountain. And when I got to the top of that mountain, slowly, slowly, one step at a time, the Lord spoke to me and told me, Irene, being the best version of yourself is what I call success. That is you summiting. And you thought this mountain was hard? When you get back home and deal with your recovery, it's gonna be the hardest thing you've ever done, but I will be right there with you. And let me tell you, I got to the top of that mountain. And with years of sobriety behind me now, I'm here to give you hope that Jesus Christ was with me all along, all the way up that mountain of recovery one step at a time, pole, pole. Take it one day at a time, daughter, and you will reach the top. It was 1975 when Shirley and Company topped the charts with Shame, Shame, Shame. The song had been an instant hit, thrusting singer Jason Alvarez into stardom. It was nothing that I expected. It was the total opposite. I was emptier than ever. Jason was 10 when his family fled Castro's Cuba and moved to the projects of New Jersey. As a poor minority, he was treated like he was second rate. His pride led him to take matters into his own hands. Gangs and people pressing you and challenging you, I was not used to that. I made up my mind nobody was going to push me around anymore. To prove his worth, he formed a gang as a young teenager. Even then, he still felt life was miserable. But there was one thing that gave him joy. I was always into music because I was a little boy. I loved music. I loved singing. But Jason never considered music as his ticket out, until one day, a couple of musicians overheard him singing. We love the way you sing, man. We're going to start a group in two weeks. But you have to play an instrument. Jason asked his father to buy a guitar. I said, I'm really going in the wrong direction with my life, and I will come out of this. I know that that's what I love to do is sing, you know. My father bought me the guitar. Jason joined the group and eventually left the gang life. I fell in love with music, and I started doing weddings and, and some nightclubs. By 21, Jason was married to Gail and pursuing music full time. He released his own album and eventually signed with Platinum Records. But that didn't fill the growing emptiness. I started doing drugs. I just, uh, somebody kind of turned me on to marijuana. And then uh, I started doing LSD. He was at the studio one day when a producer was struggling to find the right voice for a song. She asked Jason to do a take. And I see the people inside the studio going crazy, you know? And so she says, Jay, that was great. I said, I'm ready to sing it now. She goes, sing it. She said, man, we already took it. That take was amazing. Come inside and listen to it. That song was shame, shame, shame. Bang, overnight, man. We're touring the world. Jason was quickly caught up in his celebrity. Signing all these autographs, you know, people crazy screaming, you know, being in front of 10,000 people. That became 
my life, and that became my God. With that lifestyle came more drug abuse, which eventually caused his wife to ask for separation. Even then, he felt like he was on top of the world. Then one day, while he and another musician were smoking pot, he asked Jason a question that shattered his illusion. He said, man, is this all the risk to life? And then I realized that that wasn't really what my heart had been searching for. Jason became depressed and at times contemplated suicide. Life became just, uh, I was just existing. There was a hole in my heart that money, drugs, women, success, hit records couldn't fill, man. Eventually, the song dropped off the charts and the tour came to an end. It was then Jason decided to make amends with his wife. By now, Gail had become a Christian and agreed to try to work things out. He never considered her faith for himself until he took her to church one day and felt drawn to go inside. I heard the gospel preached for the first time in my life, and God just kind of spoke directly to me. Intrigued, Jason went back the following Sunday. This guy starts preaching, and he says, there is somebody here that God has been dealing with. And today, you need to give your life to Jesus. I'm sitting back there, man, I'm thinking to myself, it's crazy, you know? And then the thought hit me, you have done everything. You've tried everything. Why, why don't you do this? Jason made his way down to the altar and prayed to receive Jesus Christ as his savior. When that guy said that sinner's prayer, man, I said it from the depths of my soul. And when I got done praying, I could tell you this, the long search, that long search, man, that long search had come to an end. That hole had finally had the peace that was missing put in. Jason knew at once that he was changed. He stopped doing drugs and began restoring his relationship with Gail. He also started making Christian music. Today, Jason and Gail pastor the Love of Jesus Church in New Jersey. And of course, he's still making music. God said this to me, if you will just hold on to my hand and not let go, I will walk you through every dark place in your life and bring you to the other side. You know, that song still has such a catchy ring and everything. I can see why it literally uh, became a, a bestseller. But also, I also see something so powerful, how Jason was able to get a hold of this truth because he was thirsty for it. He said, I was just existing. He said, there was a hole in my heart. And he said, in that moment, when I heard that prayer, and it was the sinner's prayer, he said, man, I was changed and I have never been the same again. You know, Ecclesiastes, he said something, the wisest man, he says this in the third chapter, and he says it in the 11th verse. He says, God has made everything beautiful in its own time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work of God. You know, I believe that uh, there's a hole that God intentionally places in our lives in order for us to fill it with Him. And that's His love. It is not something that He's doing because He wants to hold something back from you, but He knows the best things you have to reach out for. I wonder if you're just existing and just like Jason, you're ready to turn the corner. Today, I will not embarrass you, but I'm gonna pray that sinner's prayer the same way. And then I'm gonna give you something and it's called guidance. All you have to do is request it, 1-855-759-0700, because what God is, is good orderly direction. He's guidance and that's what Jason got and he's never been the same since. But this is the prayer that he prayed. Will you pray this prayer with me? If you're ready to literally see your life and your destiny come alive. Jesus, I turn from doing things my way. I confess my sin, my wrong, and Lord, I've sinned against you. 
And as I confess my sin, I ask you to come into my heart. I give you my personal permission for your heavenly intervention. Make me the person you want me to be. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer with me, today is a great day for you. one 855 700 Prayer partners are standing by, and this is the time. Up next, Lori returns with an encouraging daily devotional. Give us a call. Hello, my name is Michelle, and I'm a prayer partner with 700 Club Canada. We have an amazing team waiting to pray with you, and we're available every day. We want to make it easy for you to connect with us. All you have to do is pick up your phone and call us at our toll-free number, 1-855-759-0700. And don't forget to let us know how God answered your prayers. We want to celebrate in your victories too. Our number again is 1-855-759-0700. We look forward to connecting with you today. You know, we can spend so much time and energy trying to convince ourselves and others that we don't need help. In fact, in our culture, independence and self-improvement, they're highly esteemed. And we kind of feel good about ourselves, you know? Well, appearing that you have it all together, it seems like that's often the goal. God never intended for us to live that way. In fact, he doesn't want us to fake it till we make it. God wants us to be open and honest with him and others so that Actually, pride doesn't get the upper hand. When we mess up, pride will tell us to cover it up. Isn't that what happened to David? See, David messed up having an affair and committing murder, and he covered it up. With the help of Nathan the prophet, David recognized his sin, and what did he do? He repented. He stopped the cover-up, and he told the truth to God and to others. And what was the result of David's repentance? Well, listen to David's words in Psalm 51, verse 10. It said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, you've probably heard the saying, Confession is good for the soul. Well, that's true. If you want to be renewed, you need to repent. You see, repentance is a turning away from the things that actually rob you of life and freedom. David knew this to be true, and he repented of his sin, and he came out of hiding, and he experienced renewal. See, God is the one that gives us a clean heart. He's the only one who can do that. You know, I can wash a stain out of my clothes. I can even clean a stain on my carpet but I cannot cleanse one impure thing from my heart. There's no power, no spray, no soap, and nothing available that I can use to cleanse my heart from the outside. Cleansing the heart, it's an inside job, and only God can do that. He is in the business of cleansing and renewal. 1 John 1, 9 reminds us of this when it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just, meaning he's able to, forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You know, God is willing and able to cleanse and renew you. He doesn't force us, but he's ready to give us a right spirit. David asked God to cleanse him and to renew him, and that's all we have to do today. Go to God with your mess up. Go to God with your sin, your cover up, and come clean with him you will be given a renewed spirit in place of your sin. See, repentance, it brings renewal, and it brings a right spirit between you and God and you and others, and that's courageous living.
Lori, I really celebrate what's happening in uh, not only this program, but in this ministry, because it's more than this. That's mm. the big theme today. Right, that's right. And yeah. there has been, and there is always more than this. Yeah, that's right. And you know, there's no better news than that. No right. matter what you're going through, no matter what we go through, yes. we know that there's just a bigger God and a bigger perspective. One of the things that's helped me so much in my life, Brian, is... Yeah. You know, you can get just looking at what's around you, your successes or your failures, right? But actually something that's helped me in my own walk with God is getting to know Him. So, and I don't mean that in sort of a, you know, general way, but a very specifically growing in, in knowing God and understanding who He is yeah. increases my perspective on everything, just yeah. changes my perspective on everything. You no, know, I, I concur. You know, when you look at Jason Alvarez and you see so many other people and, you, you see that they had success, but when they got to know God, it yeah, changed everything. everything. And that's exactly what you're saying. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I've really appreciated uh, in my walk with the Lord is that uh, now, you know, when God changes something, it's good with me. Yeah. I don't mind yeah. it as much. You know, it's yeah, just yeah. like, Lord, you're going a different direction and it's good. Yeah, it's and true. I, I, I yeah. know that there are people right now in these, these prayer requests, if you put them on your list, uh, Glenn from Ontario is praying that, that he will be able to live for God. Well, he's asking the same thing. Yeah, he's asking the same thing. Laura from Ontario, she's feeling sad and lonely and wants prayer for healing from her pain. Well, let's yeah. stretch out with that. Father, for Glenn and for Laura, we're asking that you would be their source, their strength, yeah. and also, Lord, their inspiration. Yeah. May they be filled with your spirit yeah. even now in Jesus' name. Ooh, Amen. Amen. Bigger view of God, right? Changes everything. It changes everything. Yeah. Psalm 16, 7 and 8. What a wonderful psalm. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even at night, my heart instructs me. Mm -hmm. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Yeah, that's got some great truth, Brian, isn't it? It is. It, he counsels me. He's right there. He's he right there. Yeah. You know, he's, you he's this close. And if you can't see him, put a chair there and just talk to that chair until you feel it in your heart yeah. and know it for sure. That's until true. next time, trust him in Jesus' name. That's good. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. On tomorrow's show... She learned all she had believed about God was wrong. Learning a, a different version of God, a God that actually has a ton of grace for me, you know, and that that loves me right in the middle of my mess and that I don't have to perform for. He wants a relationship with me in my deepest, darkest places. 